Hey guys, it's Andrew from the blog Pine and Prospect Home, and today I want to talk to you guys about my copper collection. I have had a lot of messages ever since starting my YouTube channel about my copper, where I find it, how I find the best deals, what to look for, and how I like to use it. So you guys know that my channel and my blog is all about thrifty decorating, how to save money on home decor. There aren't a lot of things in my home that I spent a lot of money on. I'm always trying to get the look for less. And so today I wanna to talk about copper because I think a lot of people assume that you have to have a ton of money to be able to afford copper pieces. And copper can be very expensive, believe me. But there are a couple of ways that I've been able to build up a copper collection and I thought I would share those with you today. So I am not a copper expert by any means. In fact, I was doing a little bit of research before taking this video, and I guess copper became popular in terms of cookware during the 1800s and into the early 1900s. Now, those pieces, if you find them at antique stores, the original copper pots and pans from 200 years ago, are expensive. <laughs> There's this one booth that I like to visit with beautiful copper pots and pans and they usually have this heavy sturdy brass handle or cast iron handle and they are thick. I mean the sides of the pans are super thick. Uh, they're like I said very heavy when you pick them up. I think they are beautiful. I love to look at them. <laughs> I love to uh, pick them up and admire them, but none of my pieces are of that quality. The pieces that I have collected over the years are probably more from the mid 1900s when copper became very popular again. I was actually reading that Julia Childs when uh, she you know, really brought a lot of attention to French cuisine, that's when copper pots and pans became you know all the rage again and so some of the pieces that i have are probably more from that uh, time frame uh mid 1900s and actually i learned a lot as i was reading about this but you can tell that the copper is thinner if it has a rolled edge and i was looking at my copper <laughs> and almost every single piece has a rolled edge. And what I mean by that, for example, if you look at this little ladle scoop, you can see here how the edge is rolled over. So let me explain what I like to use my copper for. I do not cook with my copper. Now one day, would I love to have beautiful, functioning copper cookware? Absolutely. But if you have shopped for it, it is very pricey. The pieces that I have collected over the years <laughs> were very affordable because number one, they are very thin, and number two, <laughs> they are mostly pretty damaged. <laughs> so I will explain what I'm talking about here in a little bit and show you a few of the pieces that I got for super cheap. Now, how can you tell if something is real copper? You know, you see a lot of uh, items at thrift stores. First of all, real copper pieces will tarnish over time. They won't be super shiny, orange, pink in color. Uh, they will have some tarnish to them. In fact, a lot of them will even have some green patina, which is another great sign that it is truly a real copper piece. Another quick, uh, tip for you if you carry a magnet around with you, which I don't generally do But something you could keep in your purse if you stick a magnet to the potter pan and it sticks Then you know that it is not real copper You know that it is some other type of metal a magnet will not stick to copper So let's talk about where I have purchased a lot of my copper over the years and why first of all why I love it so much um, copper obviously has this timeless feel to it. When I see copper in a kitchen, it immediately, to me, gives off this old world feel. You know, you can just picture this scene from Downton Abbey and, you know, the cook in her kitchen with these beautiful big copper pots and pans and I can see them hanging all over the walls. There's something so beautiful about the way that 
uh, the copper will sort of tarnish and age and there's just nothing like it. I love incorporating it into my kitchen. And while I wish I could afford <laughs> to buy uh, copper pots and pans that I could actually use to cook with, right now, like I said, all of my copper is for display purposes only. So the copper that you see hanging on the back wall of my kitchen against my stone or up on my pot rack above my chalkboard, it's really just for display. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's what I'm able to afford right now. And I still think it's absolutely beautiful. So as you can imagine, most of my copper over the years has come from thrift shops. I like to dig through that kitchen section dig through those pots and pans and see if you spot any copper. I'll never forget when I was on vacation once and I found this really cool copper pan with the brass handle. Now, let me show you what the inside looks like. <laughs> Pretty awful. You can see the tin, uh, or I'm assuming it's tin. Most copper is uh, lined with either tin or stainless steel. You can see it's just completely worn down. The copper is actually coming through in some areas, which is not a good thing. But if I'm simply displaying it, if I'm simply you know, hanging it up uh, high in my kitchen, when it's hung with all of this other beautiful copper, excuse me, when it's hung up with all of this beautiful copper, it still looks absolutely beautiful. This was another thrift store find. This really neat copper uh, colander and again it's pretty damaged in some areas but once it's hung up with all of my other copper pieces it looks beautiful. This is another thrift store find that I showed to you guys earlier. It's a I think it's a planter I'm assuming. This was I believe five dollars at a thrift store. So you can find some really pretty pieces while you're thrifting. The rest of my copper has come from antique stores though. And that's probably where you're more likely to find it. You just might pay a little bit more, but not always. Uh, I remember I found this really cool copper pan. It's in great condition. You can see the tin is sort of uh, wearing down, but it has this really neat stamp here on the side. And the stamp says made in Germany, which is so cool. And I paid like $10 for this. Um, it might have even been less than $10. I want to say it was crazy, like eight bucks or something. And I found it at an antique store. Probably one of my favorite antique store finds when it comes to copper is this beautiful um, I'm assuming it's a double boiler, but I think this is so pretty. Has the brass handles over here. You can pull this part out. And the lining is actually in perfect condition. I'm assuming it's newer, of course, but it's absolutely beautiful and I paid $20 for it at an antique store. So you can see that it does have that rolled edge. So it's definitely thinner. It's not, um, you know, super old copper, but it's still beautiful. And I love how it looks in my kitchen. Now this past year, I was antique shopping with my mom for my birthday. She takes me antique shopping every year. And we found a set of five of these really neat copper pitchers, which are so cool. And I knew that they were real copper in the store because you can see the green um, patina on them and the fact that they have aged, but they are very lightweight. And I was able to get the entire set for $45 for all five of them, or maybe my mom talked them down to 40. I think she talked them down to 40 and they look so pretty, sort of scattered throughout my kitchen. So I'm just sharing these items with you today to kind of give you an idea of where to look for copper, but also just to encourage you in that you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to have it in your kitchen. Now this piece sitting right next to me is probably the heaviest copper piece that I own and I know I shared it with you recently. It's that copper 
uh, tea kettle. It was my grandfather's and it's absolutely gorgeous. And actually, this tea kettle was my grandfather's as well, but he gave this one to me a long time ago um, when he moved up here to where we are, he uh, passed this on to me and I think it's also another uh, beautiful piece. All right, so how do you go about cleaning copper? So I have tried using a lemon, lemon juice and salt. So all you do is take your lemon and cut it in half and then you just use the juice of that lemon and that flat surface that you've cut to rub all over your copper piece and then you sprinkle salt on and then you can actually sort of rub your copper piece with the surface of the lemon and it will shine up your copper. Um, another thing that I have used actually which is kind of crazy is ketchup. Ketchup, uh, the acidity I'm assuming is what helps to clean up your copper. I just sort of feel like you have to go through a lot of ketchup. <laughs> I used ketchup to clean this piece, which is quite large, and you can put some ketchup on and sort of move it around with a paper towel and it will clean your piece. Um, probably though the fastest and most effective way that I've used uh, is Barkeeper's Friend. It's super handy for cleaning copper. Not as natural, I know. Barkeeper's Friend though is probably the fastest and most effective way that I've tried. If you guys know of any other methods, I'm sure there are some. I sort of like the way they look when they're a little bit more um, tarnished, when they have more patina. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new to my channel, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any more questions about copper or if you have any tips that you'd like to share, I would love for you to leave them in the comments below. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.